Spirit Facebook Live event. I'm Christopher McClure, and today we have a very special guest, celebrated creator Beth Salandon. Uh, Beth is most recently the creator of the Ravenous Dragon Tarot, and we want to catch up today to learn more. Yes, there it is. I have mine copy too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, we want to catch up today to learn more about this amazing deck and how to use it, but what and what's ahead. But first, a little background on Beth. Beth Salandon has been a creator of creating decks since 2006 beginning with the Thaben Tarot. I asked her how it was said earlier, so she said, she told me it was right. So Th <laughs> she strives <laughs> she strives to create works that will uh, reach deep into the subconscious, give acknowledgement to the fear that resides in the dark, and bring an honest dialogue for personal uh, growth. Beth has now created over 100 decks, that's just amazing, including uh, Guardian Tarot, Dream Raven, uh, Blue Cat Tarot, and Tarot Leaves. She graduated from the University of Maine, Orano, with a Bachelor of Arts in Fine Arts Education. So, uh, yeah, great to have you here. I've been wanting to do this for a while, and uh, I'm really excited about this deck, too. It's, it's just gorgeous. And uh, I, wanted, I was trying to, I was just thinking about, you know, how long I've known you. I think I've known you for a decade now, over a decade, I think, believe it or not. I so, think that's, yeah, we met at Reader Studio. Reader Studio yeah, Reader Studio. I think that the, your Tarot Leaves was kind of like brand new, uh, just coming yeah. out. So, uh, so that was uh, at the, the beginning. That's, that, that was after you had started creating tarot and, and things and uh, the, the burning question that I've never been able to ask and so now I finally have the, the, the chance to ask it um, is uh, <laughs> what's your tarot story? <laughs> okay my tarot story. Yes your tarot story. All right so when I was in college my mother happened to buy my sister a tarot deck. She, she and my sister had gone to a tarot reader and my mother purchased her a uh, Palladini tarot deck. Oh, yes. And oh, yes. being an art student, I came home to find this thing of amazing artwork that I had never seen before. Mm -hmm. And I was also in my art education classes, and we were learning about semiotics, how we, we use signs and signifiers from the words we see to what we envision when we hear a word, mm -hmm. uh, and to also the symbols and icons and how they influence how we perceive things and mm -hmm. suddenly i see this artwork before me and mm -hmm. i had never heard of tarot up until that point so i'm about 21 mm -hmm. and i got looking through them and so and my sister you know she's the guru at this point she's the knowledgeable one because she's the one with the deck gotcha. and gotcha. of course i'm sitting there picking it apart with mm -hmm. the semiotic analysis that i had to write a paper on for college okay and I just got more and more drawn. And then I started questioning after reading the interpretations and then looking at the visual imagery, mm -hmm. it started at the back of my mind of questioning, well, why does it mean that? Because mm -hmm. that's not my impression of what those symbols mean to me. Mm -hmm. And as I aged and I started practicing and when I was teaching in the juvenile system, I, I taught juvie for a little while, no, I did not um, know that juvie. Huh? That must have been a good experience. So yeah. Yes, it was. And I started to just kind of play around, you know, just just a few little doodle of cards, just okay. to give like, you know, I knew that these artists were doing it, but who was I to try and do a tarot deck? Mm -hmm. And uh, as I was emerging in my own arts form and art style, I mm -hmm. was selling little paintings on eBay, mm -hmm. and I started just trying out the first three cards, the magician, the high priestess, and the empress mm -hmm. in these variety of different medias. I There's some stained glass uh, panels that I've made that okay. were up on eBay, like the death card, the tower card. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're, they're like 19 by 13 inches. Uh, well, actually bigger. They're like 19 by 26. They're huge with those wow. stained glass panels of tarot cards. Yeah. And through all of this practice with all these different media, um, I started this one practice session that I was doing with the Savan because I was like, okay, I want to make something that can I make it witchy with all the symbols with that feel and energy to it that was relevant to me. And all of a sudden I got this email from this, per this buyer, on, uh, this person on eBay I'd never seen. Mm -hmm. And he says to me, oh, I like what I'm seeing. I, I look forward to seeing the rest of this. That's it. Well, at that point, I hadn't realized someone was actually watching what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought, oh, I'm just making mm -hmm. these paintings for someone's house. You might like have one of these three cards. 
Right. And suddenly it's like, well, if someone's watching me, I should probably keep going. And then I started chipping away through it. And then all of a sudden this email came along. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see you only have a few more cards left. I'd like to order a copy of them. And okay. that completely threw me because no one had ever asked to have a complete set of anything. Of, mm -hmm. And then that was the learning curve of how do I get these to print, print at the quality that they needed to be yeah. and not to have them as just paper prints, have them mm -hmm. laminated mm -hmm. and start doing my own edition. And to that started off as like little card boxes. And now okay. I have my own design boxes and the cards all laminated on the inside. And so this is a complete process that took roughly two to three years of working through and perfecting over that time period. Right. And the person that pushed me at the very beginning was Adam McLean. Okay. One of our noted uh, ter major tarot collectors whose yeah. collection has just been an incredible asset to the tarot community mm -hmm. and his work in alchemy. Awesome. That's really neat. Um, and so then that 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 was you you kind of like off and running uh, then uh, from from there and haven't looked back, really. Exactly. <laughs> and that that old um, comment that I made at the beginning where I started questioning, how can I make this relevant to now mm -hmm. with the symbols? And that's what really started logging in me into how can I make tarot that is still follows the structure? but is also relevant to where we are now, because at the time when that tarot was made, it was mm -hmm. relevant and the symbols were relevant to the people of the time. Mm -hmm. So that, that's that been a big push for me as well, is to pull that forward. That's great, the relevance, yeah. It's uh, in just re reflecting on your decks as you, uh, you brought out through uh, Red Feather, you know, they, they all have a different personality to them, whether it's the the blue the, and a different feel and look, it's, it's they're, 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 they're their own entities. There's not this cookie cutter thing to them. Right. You know, it's, uh, you know, the, the blue the blue cat and the, you know, the dream raven and the tarot lee, they always have different, this, you know, and uh, and the guardian tarot, which is really um, interesting. And this is, this is you know, another in that line um, as well. And and this, you talk about of the time, this is very um, more relationship based Kind of, you know, it, there's it's a, there's a heavy relationship component to it. The mm -hmm. the uh, interplay between the uh, raviness, uh, raviness, and uh, the raven and the dragon. Uh, so, right. um, and it's it's really neat how they kind of like interplay. And uh, yeah, so what's uh, what? How how did this come into being? How how did this one get its personality? This this one goes back a little ways. This okay. one goes back to when you met me, oh. and we were at Reader Studio. Okay, and. I was sitting, I started this particular deck when I was getting on the plane and I had had a dream about this character that you're gonna see. And I had a dream about this character right here, okay? Mm -hmm. Right before I went to Reader Studio. Mm -hmm. And so I brought my paper and I brought my pencil. Mm -hmm. Hi, Michelle. And <laughs> I, with a pen and during, when people were doing their talking and everything and their presentations, and I was at the table, I was sitting there drawing all these Raven pictures. Mm -hmm. And they were inspired by that particular dream. And so this one is called Raven's Window. And before I got home, I had had this um, quasi somewhat tarot-ish, somewhat um, oracle. Mm -hmm. Like this one, instead of emperor, um, not chariot, oh, let's see. Oh, oh, here we go. Instead of hermit, I had had inner wisdom. So I was starting to cross the Oracle and the tarot at this point mm -hmm. with this particular deck. So that was in 2011. And then after I went through some major life changes, mm -hmm. all of a sudden I was getting like these pictures and images of dragons in my mind. And that summer in 2017, I started painting a series of dragon paintings. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, so these are all, this one is called Resurrection. And this is kind of like mm -hmm. me, you know, re-emerging myself, almost like a phoenix. Mm -hmm. And having some play, you know, learning to play again. Mm -hmm. And once this particular deck was done, then I was 
traveling about and to help keep myself occupied and awake on the flights. Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks, Michelle. I create, I started playing around with considering the people that I had in my life at the time in 2016, that's when I started dancing. Right. And at that point, I also started meeting people that were almost mentorish where they were very self-confident, very aware, mm -hmm. very of themselves. Mm -hmm. And coming from a, a recent divorce and mm -hmm. wanting to get back to being of myself again, mm -hmm. these are people that I just admired. And they worked as mentors for me from dance to just being back in the world again, you know, and be, mm -hmm. just being me. And sure. I started to play and I started watching how they interacted with one another. Mm -hmm. And I started featuring myself as the Raven and knowing that, you know, in all challenges and everything that, you know, I was going to have to take time. Mm -hmm. And and then oh, I have some of the dragons, like, you know, we, we, we have some dragons in the tarot world that are really great at pulling that one card and boom, they know you like, like they like the back of their hand, they, they got gotcha. you. Right. And right. so, yes, we, yeah. So some of these dragons in this particular Oracle deck, mm -hmm. these are, you know, representative of mentors of mine within the community mm -hmm. that okay. I find myself. And in 2017, that particular year, I started teaching a class called Get Focus, Stay Focus. Okay. And within that, it asked students to find a mentor. And then mm. how, what does this mentor mean to you? Who are you mm -hmm. as a person? Mm -hmm. And I started looking at how all these components of how do we learn about ourselves in order to help ourselves move forward, you know, reaching out to mentors when we need them, giving ourselves the time, showing our, how do we function in showing love for one another and mm -hmm. what is our love language. Mm -hmm. Just understanding those types of things is one of the things that I've been working with students in school. Mm -hmm. And then we then both of those decks just seem to like merge together and they started off black and white. And then I was like, you know what? I want to see what they look like with color and to bring right. them alive and have that vibe to them, which yeah. is where we are now as I get move, move the little deck boxes off to the side. And so, doo -doo -doo -doo. and so mm -hmm. here we are here where we have the raven, the raven wings down underneath flying up mm -hmm. into the goddess with the devil, not devil, with the, dragon coming out and emerging and then yeah you know some of them do get into you know now is not the time to talk you know just you're gonna have to you know pace yourself mm -hmm. and you know and just taking a completely different perspective in the hindsight of we are perpetually growing through this and then how can an artwork help us grow and help us achieve actualization mm -hmm. which in reality um, percentage wise, statistically, I believe it's between five and 10%, usually about 5% of the entire population ever achieves actualized self actualization in the Maslow's theory of hierarchy, right. which he borrowed from the Blackfoot tribe, by the way. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of components that build into having us achieve our greater selves. And mm -hmm. I wanted to create a device, a tool that mm -hmm. could potentially help us and help people with that. Yeah, I think you have. And I like how much you've, uh, well, thanks for your, the backstory on that. <laughs> That's, uh, it, there's a lot woven into this. And um, a couple of things from there. I, I like how you uh, weave the love languages into into this. That's that's very important. Um, it's, it's subtle, you know, but it's there. And you explain how that how that's woven in. Like you have the, the, the watches for, um, for time, of course, and you have different aspects for different, you know, love languages and things for service and for um, for touch and for different aspects there. And um, the, the, the neat thing about this that I really like is how the, the narrative is kind of like written through the oh, actually the entire deck. So I, I went by card by card. And when I actually what I did is I is I read um, I started reading the whole thing. And I just started reading just just the uh, the um, sentences about about the, the story. And if you read just those throughout the entire thing, it's a really good story. 
<laughs> Thank you. I've, I've been I've been enjoying living it. <laughs> right. So it, it, it's, it's yeah. Yeah, because it's very much you know what's been going on, and it you know when I started working towards my goals and just reaching out to mentors. And so like having a dance mentor, having a tarot mentor, having a Lennerman mentor like Marsha McCord. Oh my gosh, she's she's so kind to me because <laughs> that's a hard one for me to learn. Mm -hmm. um, and the teaching mentors and people that I look up to within my profession, and they're there, mm -hmm. and they, they this is part of all of their stories and how they, for all of us, all of our mentors are so woven in. And we have so much to learn from them. And so, yeah, hopefully this will help. Yeah, hopefully, yeah. Um, just with, with that story and then the idea of the, the mentor, one thing that, that struck me just as far as with the um, the majors and the minors, like the, and the way I kind of like um, defined it to myself is that the majors are kind of like, you know, a, 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 a movie almost, like a film. Um, actually, we were talking about films right before the we, we started here. Um, so the it's the, the majors are kind of like a film, and then the minors are almost like episodes. Like, oh, if you want to fill in these kind of gaps, and here is there, and here and, and there, and then and, and woven together, it's really interesting. And then to do a reading with that too is it, is really um, fun uh, as well. So uh, so yeah. So like, how, what did you really like like about creating this deck? What, what got you going about creating it? Uh, when I really started putting in the colors and if you sit and meditate and kind of stare at some of them, mm -hmm. you're going, you should start seeing some of the scales popping out and like, oh. li like the magic eye, you mm -hmm. know how things kind of like pop right. out and they yeah. kind of like shift around. So as I was painting it and I was playing with the colors mm -hmm. and suddenly everything was going like 3d and mm -hmm. <laughs> trying to paint it and suddenly everything's like, it was alive on the page. It was like wow. had its own pulsing going on. And that that really tripped me out when I was making it because it was no longer a static painting. It was very right. much looking at it and like it was really very much there. Uh-huh. Yeah. So yeah, so yeah. That's fascinating. Yeah. I mean actually I think each card really is, you know, there's so much you know, going on there is kind of a meditation unto itself. And, um, you know, I like to pick favorites. I don't know. I've always been this way personally, you know, so, but, and for me, I was really struck by the chariot for some reason. I will look at chariot. Um, so, um, it's not my, not my card. You know, people have their own cards, but I'm going through this and I kept coming back to that just because of the rhythm of it. Um, it's just, um, there's something about it. It's really just, um, maybe it's the right card for me right now. Maybe in, you know, next week <laughs> I'll just, <laughs> I'll zoom into, uh, to another one and um you know not only is, is there a narrative through this but this this is kind of like almost like a dance unto itself it's like kind of funny like last week we were talking about tarot in motion and this this deck as uh rapid dragon has its own dance aspect to it you know i know that you this was kind of born of a, a little bit of a dance too you described in your introduction about you know how you met this dancer as you're going into your your dancing um your interest you know how it grew right and this person yes. who just had, who was very, um, you know, uh, they understood themselves pretty well. But then, what, what was it? Every time you met them, it, they were like a new person, kind of. Like they kept growing, right? You're talking oh, about yes. self actualization. So, you know, that 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 one person, it sound, sounds to me, I don't know them, but I mean, that that's the kind of person that um, really is, um, you know, galvanized that um, idea more of the self actualization and, and being. And new and totally and, and completely working on yourself um, on a regular basis like that, or it could be way oh, off. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know, seeing it in action in other people, someone else who is working through that with fidelity. That's that's right. the big shift. Is someone sure. who is committed, because many times, and, and even for me, I'm totally guilty of this. Get. I'll get work. I would get working on like, oh, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to work on this with myself. Mm -hmm. And yeah, sure, for a, a little while, and then you know you kind of you no know, fade away. It's kind of like you know, but then to see someone constantly coming back to okay, so where where you know seeing where they were at, and then how have they progressed and grown? Mm -hmm. It was like okay, so and then they would ask me, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> I should probably be a bit more <laughs> no. with fidelity on this. 
And so it's really work to always strive that in each day and each action to always improve upon that action and always be ever learning and more mindful. I think the more mindful and perspective of what's going on with other people mm -hmm. has turned out to probably be the bigger lesson, like especially in teaching and in COVID. Sure. And, and being that much more humble and that much more forgiving, like, oh, hey, we got this. This is, you know, and even even going back into the classroom after COVID. Mm -hmm. And it took me roughly about over a month. It was on week five. A student finally said, a, a freshman finally, finally, the first time, mm -hmm. said something that was utterly hilarious like normal moon period and like a week for them. But it took five weeks before they cracked a smile and I heard laughter again from this wow. whole experience. Oh yeah. And so it's been a daily digging in, let's connect, let's remember our humanity and take a moment mm -hmm. and laugh. And we were, they were, and I happened to catch the conversation, a very normal teen conversation. I'll share it with you because this is a classic one. They okay. were, and I've heard it before, you know, okay. about yeah. 14. Uh, <laughs> this has been consistent over the years. It's like the existential crisis that happens with 14 year olds. It's like, why do they call them chicken wing, buffalo wings, when there's no, they're not wings and there's no <laughs> bones in them from Applebee's? I can do the meme every, with that. Like that, video, <laughs> that deep and they were just baffled by this and i right. said so should they be called like buffalo tenders <laughs> you know because they're kind of like chicken nuggets right i said well it's more like chicken nuggets and then this one student he goes he goes what about buffalo nuggets <laughs> I lost. That's funny. i did one yeah. one thousand and i just did the whole teacher buffalo nuggets. look at them <laughs> Uh, and I turned and I lost it. I just yeah. full on laugh. And then it took him one, one thousand, two thousand, and then he was just lost. And but being that, you know, and finding myself as that mentor to break the ice mm -hmm. and to be humble about it and keep that understanding of where we have been through for all mm -hmm. of us. Mm -hmm. And just take take a side step, be a human again. And that's that's been a lesson that you know, the ravenous dragon has from working through that, that had I not, I'm not so sure that I would have been able to address my own growth and also anxieties mm -hmm. of going back into a classroom when COVID is still going on. Sure. And wow. these cases are still there, mm -hmm. but yeah, we keep our mask on and keep our distance, wash our hands. We're good. Right. Yeah. Um, that's a great perspective to have. And you've been working with, um, you've been teaching, how long have you been teaching? Uh, now 23 so years I, I, as i was saying that oh i shouldn't have, that's yeah okay yes no so you have a lot of you're very experienced you're very knowledgeable about um teaching and working with um and, and it's mainly like like you know high schoolers right and and uh, that well, right now yes yeah, so yeah. my my on. goal after my youngest one had graduated in 2020 when all this went exploding oh, wow. in our faces wow. Okay. And so that was her senior year. And my goal after that senior year was to drop back into elementary school because elementary kids and me, it we are making we are making the dragons and doing the puppet shows with the ravens and right. <laughs> having a ball. Yeah. yeah. And then suddenly I found myself where I knew my personality and at this moment in time it was best served at the high school level. And yeah. Yeah, I'm glad I'm 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 glad I'm still there and yes. And yes. Um at the great <laughs> uh it's it's I can't I, I give you I applaud you for what you're doing. It's it's not an easy job. Um and you're influencing these kids in a very positive way, I'm sure, just bringing, you know, what you what you offer, you know, to them and and engaging with them uh, via art. And actually, you know, as, as I'm thinking too, this really is a, a, a good deck for anyone, really, from any age. Um right. To, it's not so intense that you know we off putting or anything like that. It's it's a it's a really um, it's a it's a good deck for anyone to really just who, lo who loves you know ravens or dragons of course, 
but um, who really wants to to get into tarot with with something that's going to be you know fun, like fun and deep, um, and uh, well conceived with a story and everything. So I think it appeals to a, a wide range of you know of ages um, and of interests um, as well too. Yet yeah, it, it is for really for any age uh, for sure. Um, so yeah, now you for for this, I mean you've you've created. Like as, as I mentioned when we started, um, your decks have had so many different personalities to them. You know, with the, the softer tones of like tarot leaves and the you know the blue cab, which is just if if anyone hasn't ever seen that, it's really gorgeous. It's on the you know very. Do you have it right there? Are you, are you grabbing it? Oh, oh, you know, I was looking around. You look for it. Yeah. It's, so no, and it's I based don't off, have that, that's based off the Siamese cat. Um, and yes. um, so really, really fun and playful. Um, and then with uh, so yeah with the with the personalities so um, yeah so you've you've seen different eras kind of in the mind body spirit how how have things changed since you've been in the tarot world what's what's been happening what have you seen happen I have seen uh, just as I uh, well going right on back to that epiphany from way back when I first saw a tarot back when I was like twenty twenty one my sister mm -hmm. had gotten her first deck and seeing how people were following a staged setup for the tarot cards. Mm -hmm. Like we were so we were so prone that, well, it felt felt this way, mind you, it just felt this way to me, okay. is that so oftentimes we were, the artwork kept following a, a script, a very rigid script. Like it okay. had to be this, it had to have this symbol, you had to have this right. Right. and suddenly now what i'm seeing are two things one being artists now are much more open to creating a deck that is relevant to them and in our times i'm see and seeing artwork that is that people can connect that people connect to mm -hmm. on a totally different level mm -hmm. and not just always going back to learning that rote memorization Right. But to right. embrace the imagery and what the imagery speaks to them on. Mm -hmm. And I also see more people that are willing to create a deck that never thought that they would before. Mm -hmm. And I've mm -hmm. seen that emerge where, hey, you get a pen and a piece of paper. Let's roll. Who says it has to be looking like this? Right. And I had started doing some sessions at like the denver con and then mm -hmm. another one up oh, at yeah. the nukes with mm -hmm. doing Lunderman. so mm -hmm. in one hour we drew out just just the base drawing just to get people started and mm -hmm. drawing out their own Lunderman deck that they could then go and decorate more but it was created by them and mm -hmm. the participants were quite they they liked the downtime with it they liked that it was we just kind of rolled right on through it and like mm -hmm. I think it was an hour, maybe an hour and 15 minutes. We had 36 mm -hmm. cards drawn out, which, yeah, no, I don't normally do that myself. That's not mm -hmm. how fast I work. But just to have the basics down. Oh, there. Okay. Eloy was there. I remember that. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah. So, yes. Yeah. And it, it was fun. Just, you know, instead of starting at number one, we started at the very end. Like, we all can make a cross then, okay, we all can make an anchor, you know? Mm -hmm. And so we started off with the very simple ones and then we worked progressively into the harder ones. Gotcha. So there, there gotcha. is a strategy. That's really neat. Um, yeah, and that goes right into, you know, your career process and things you say. Now you say you're not fast, but I think you are fast and really good too. Um, if you create a hundred decks, I mean, a hundred decks was was when, you know, that, that your, your last bio was written. Have you created maybe like maybe 50 more since then or? <laughs> like, I have more. <laughs> I, I I have a I have a little fun one called Kirk. Yes, that's a, yes. I'm familiar yeah, with that. So one. I have yes. Kirk, and this this is when we all went to lockdown, and <laughs> this was my you know trying to mm -hmm. push through the anxiety of mm -hmm. suddenly you know being home on a computer trying to meet with students who didn't want to get on the computer, who right. all wanted to feel that school was out, yay, <laughs> not mm -hmm. realizing oh no we still have yeah. work to do, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And let's see, what else have I been doing? I did a Isabel Snail deck, and I've done a deck called the Shaded Tarot. Oh. And I have, let's see, a awareness, awakening. That that's one that I haven't. I you don't know that one. You haven't seen that one yet. 
And so I, I kind of okay. like have that one tucked away okay. for later okay. use. And when I'm ready to share that one, because that, that was during that 2015, mm -hmm. you know, transition, getting ready to transition. Gotcha. And let's see, what else? I have a number of them that I've just kind of just drawn up and just tucked them away. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so I'm still chipping away. And as far as like what deck to next do, I know I have some people that are waiting for me to get, uh, I have a deck that's been inspired by Liz Boa, uh, Lisbon, Portugal, that I've started working on. So I know I have people waiting for that one, for me to finish that one up. Right. And who knows what's going to inspire me next? Because I, I honestly don't <laughs> don't know what sure what yeah. energy or ideas are going to start channeling. So right, it's, that's I, exciting. I look though. forward to the adventure. That's exciting, exactly. Um, and so it sounds to me as, as though you're open to uh, wherever the spirit moves you, as far as your creativity is concerned. And uh, you know, if it, if it's ready to flow out, it's ready to flow. I, I remember um, with the Ravenous Dragon. I want to say that I, I had seen the, the some of the black and whites maybe from the Oracle. That then became mm -hmm. this and you know i think we i remember having a discussion maybe about this at, at, a, at a different year studio actually maybe like four years ago um or right. whenever you started but um but yeah so that's just how it tends to tends to go and uh, and the, the funny thing is that i keep going back to this but this is so different than your last one with us which was the guardian arrow yeah um, the guardian is, was really calling people to the carpet <laughs> Yeah, that was more. The Guardian was just so like, we're going to deal with this now. We're done. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So uh, different uh, different personality uh, for sure. Yes. I, yeah, I'm, once the Guardians were done, they, they, they simmered down as far as like the channeling mm -hmm. and seeing those images. What, I mean, that was an insane channeling where literally my hand could not go fast enough with the wow. images as they were coming to me in my sketchbook and then like writing all around like on the sketchbook pages on the text and everything and it was just words after words being compiled and at the time i wasn't even quite aware of the words mm -hmm. and even writing the book was a lot of channeling and then after the book came out and everything and i'm looking at it, it's like i'm reading this it's like I wrote this. <laughs> so I'm looking at like, wow. I know I wrote this, but I, it's still, mm -hmm. you know, when I was looking at it at later on in life, it's like, oh my gosh, this is so relevant to now. So it's almost like my past self was family, the future self, and they all met mm -hmm. in the middle somehow. I'm, right. I'm still trying to figure that one out. So that that was an insanely intense deck to create. This one was way more fun. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. Well, yeah, that sounds like kind of, you know. It was the right that that was the right deck at the right time. This is the right deck at the right time. The next one, we, I know, you know, I talked about the um, some of the ones you mentioned already, and uh, I'm excited to see uh, more of uh, more of those. And uh, yeah, so that's now. Do you actually read tarot often yourself, or are you too busy um, with the of art? Late, <laughs> of late, I've been really busy. I've been yes. Uh, yes. working on paintings of late. So when I come home from school, and as soon as this is done, I'll mm -hmm. grab a little bite to eat, and I'll be right back to painting. And so every once in a while, I'll pick up a Lenormand, but if I want like a more in-depth clarity and like have a provocative um, moment to reflect, mm -hmm. then, oh yes, I, I will definitely pull a, pull a card out and the focus and then, you know, the A or B and then what overrides everything type of reading. And yeah, so, but right now everything's pretty chill. You know, I, I like in all reality, I go to school and I teach kids how to paint and draw and do clay pottery pieces. And we were painting clay pottery pieces and teaching Japanese ink painting. I really don't have a hard. This is this is like this is like I am living the dream. I am. And so I was seeing I was learning some new painting techniques with the Japanese ink painting today. And and I was telling the kids and my eyes got really big. I was like. <laughs> To see how I'm going to work this into my next paintings. And they're going, oh, man. Okay, okay. <laughs> and, and they, and, yeah, one yeah. group just sat and doodled on paper and trying out all the brush techniques for like an hour. And I'm like, guys, you have a, a, a scroll to design. You need to get to the scroll. <laughs> and so that, that was like pulling. I, I never thought, you know, 
doodling would be a hard thing to take a child from and move them to the major project, but that that was that was a challenge. I'm sure. I'm sure you can get them there uh, too. And I, I wanted to. I, I did want to make sure that we mentioned that. Um, I mean, actually, we talked about this a little bit yesterday at our at our tech test um, about your writing. Um, you're actually a, a very writer too. Um, is that that's kind of I think sometimes the your artwork is overshadowed. Your overshadows a little bit your writing. Isn't it where, where did it's it's maybe do you have a Wikipedia page that says writer or something? I forget you said something. It's like writer. Yeah, it's, right. It's a, the students. So I figure, you know, I want the students to see art examples. So you sure. were mentioning how it's very kid friendly. Yes. And knowing I teach and my audience and I'm I'm a role model to students and sure. I want them sure. to see that, you know, you don't, you know, you, you are a role model on and off the court at all times. So mm -hmm. you really need to be impeccable with who you are mm -hmm. everywhere you go. Right. And so I just tell the students if I want them to look up, you know, a specific like art technique. So we mm -hmm. were utilizing ink line mark making to design tattoos last week. Okay. And so I'll say something like, oh, go just mm -hmm. type in my name and, you know, we'll, we'll find it. And, mm -hmm. and this one group of students I was substituting in an English class. All right. And the kids are like, you know, trying to get to know me a little bit. I said, just Google my name. It tells you everything. <laughs> Stop. Right. And they, they looked and they're like, you're an American writer? You're famous. <laughs> right. Why are you here? <laughs> Doing yeah, the good I said, we, can't, we can't all be Stephen King right now, kids. Right. I said, you know, and besides, you know, this is what I enjoy doing. Like, seriously, doing Japanese ink painting and pottery. Come on. I mean, that who would not want to go do that? You're, who wouldn't? Yeah. Exactly. You're, you're living a dream for sure. No doubt about oh, it. Oh, yeah. So that, that completely trips them when they see oh, sure. that I'm listed as a writer, writer. not an illustrator. So, but, and, but you're, you're a good writer, too. I want to make sure that's stressed. Because just with the, as I mentioned earlier, the, the narrative that will, that's woven through the uh, ravenous dragon is great. Also, the explanations of the cards themselves too, which is because and, and, and even the way it's positioned. So, just like I did um, when I was looking through, you know, for to to uh, just review the deck again after it's going kind of, through. I, I love actually seeing things like I, I see them all the way through the process, you know. So I see them as the one that proposed, and then as they come to fruition and evolve, it's really exciting for me to see too. So you know, once I get these copies uh, here, then once they're finally. Um, the our advanced copies are in just to go through it and, and see how it's manifested is really neat to see and um, but you can actually for for whatever your needs are whether you need the narrative it's there if you need the um, you know the, the explanation of the card what's going on in the card too um, it's there uh, too and even the reverse now you have a certain term for the reversals I, I I forget what that is but I really liked it it's still a positive right it's, it's still yeah a positive reversal po okay and... right yeah so i was testing this theory out with another i believe with the guardians or an isabel snail deck one one of my other decks i took it mm -hmm. took it on in and i i picked on one of my uh co-workers and he he was very gracious and so when i was looking at like the pros and cons of his personality like who is he mm -hmm. in the center row and you'll see at the back of the ravens deck that this tarot spread is mapped out for you to use. And on one side is the pros, you know, what are they not? Mm -hmm. And then on the con, the pro, the cons, wait, I just said that in reverse, didn't I? Because I was looking at my hands and I'm realizing I'm opposite. Sorry okay. about that. Okay. So on the left-hand side, we have the cons. And then on the right-hand side, we have the pros. Mm -hmm. And yeah. when we are looking at the main focus of the personality, you know, what's on pro to this personality. Mm -hmm. I was like, one of the cards came up as a reversal and it was like, well, he's not arrogant. So to me, you know, it's like, well, that's kind of a positive thing. It's not seen as a negative thing. Mm -hmm. This person was, you know, not, a, you know, not aggressive. It's like, well, that's certainly a positive thing. I think it might've been like devil upside down or something. It's like, that's actually a good con to have. Right. So I started questioning or some, and also some of the reversals came over in the positive. And I was like, wait a minute, you know, are these really seen as, should I be seeing this deck that's coming up as bad? 
in reversals or just something slightly different that we need to focus on in a different degree. And I know the tarot deck with the, what is it, the Mother Earth, the round one? Mother Earth, yeah. That, that pivots with the amount of energy to as it goes to each side, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And so I was like, well, what if instead of seeing it, the reversals as negative connotation, what if it's actually a good thing that this is not a thing in your life? Right. Or mm -hmm. a different, slightly different way to look at things. Like, okay, so if it's in reversal, maybe you really want to kind of question the intention that someone is maybe not being too honest with, you know, be, be a bit more aggressive, you know, right. move sure. forward sure. with, you know, don't just sit back and say, oh yeah, go ahead. Do, get, uh, I'll just go ahead and do whatever job you want. And instead, mm -hmm. well, why do you really want me to do this? Mm-hmm. You know, what's, what, what else is going on? You know, be, be more inquisitive towards things in some of the cards. Exactly. Um, you mentioned the spreads. Uh, the, there's two, two spreads in the back here. We have the, rea the reality of personality and the art of change. Very different approaches. Yes. To, I like how your, your approaches to that, just a regular, the, the art of change is a, just a three card reading. But, um, you know, the motivation behind it. Um, it's really interesting. And I, and for deck creators, I always like to try and do a little uh, reading, if you don't mind. Pull a couple cards uh, before. Boy, we've went, blown through some time here already. Boy, a lot. So anyway, that, that, that's, oh, fine. Me. that's fine. I, it's, yeah, yeah, time, 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 space continuum and me don't. <laughs> it's, it's, that's amazing. it flows wow. very quickly with me. Okay, clearly. So, uh, so yeah, so let's maybe do a, a, a reading. How about that? Um, okay, uh, so yeah. on the art of change, okay. what we what is prescribed is that mm -hmm. you consider what type of goal do you want to have in your life? What, what do you want to achieve? Because a lot of this deck is about setting goals for yourself, working with a mentor, working with yourself for fidelity. If you want things to change and to grow and to improve, you need to do the work. Right. Sure. Yeah, you know, that's, you can't just jump over things and so suddenly, go, Ta -da! or, oh, it failed. Well, did you read the book that was assigned for a class? No, but I should still get an A. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> it was like, no, that's not how it works. Right. It's, it's, you know, they, they have figured out with me in order to get that A, you've got to do the work. Mm -hmm. Does it have to be per, does it have to be like beautifully and like my art level? No you've got to put your effort into it to get that a mm -hmm. well and i had so this, idea. This, this so, gets right into how i grade okay i feel like yeah i, I need to sit up straight now and, and make sure I'm yes paying attention <laughs> no slouching um, you know, don't lean back in the chair <laughs> i know it's just right, we're gonna have a cold sweat here i think um so um the uh, uh my, my thought was maybe we could do a like, reading just how about for the world how can the world transform how about that can we do that is that is that allowable can we say, okay, write down like how can how can humanity, um, you know, be, be be better to each other? Um, that was my. Okay, that so was our my, goal is for humanity humanity to be better for each right, other. Yes, yeah, so that's that's give a project out into the world what how humanity can can improve. Um, that, by that's using, a great question right there. And so what we would want to do is that we want to break this down. So as we draw the cards, we're going to break them down into objectives for your goal. So objective one is kind of like, this is your first job to do. Then you have mm -hmm. a second one, then you have a third one. Now mm -hmm. understand this, you're asking a worldwide question on what no, it's big. Design it's does big. a very it's particular big. personal thing. But we'll see how it works. I haven't okay, done a worldwide not? question works, yeah. sure. in a very long time. And since Donna, um, Donna Lay, I think was the last one I did a worldwide question on. Okay, so goal number one, I, I got my card. Great. And goal number one is Ace of Wands. Ace of Wands. Okay. So first and foremost, we're going to want to start off in that journey and just embracing what we need and getting that creative energy going. Mm -hmm. And so taking action, you know, mm -hmm. start getting that actionable plan. What are you going to do towards this? Because this isn't just one person mm -hmm. uh, to do everything. It's going to take each one of us having a component to get that creative vice up and going. And number two, the next goal we need to do oh, is God. 10 of cups. 
So we are going to need to, as well, oh, that's kind of cool. So all the tendrils of the main cup at the very top, reaching out and dipping into all the cups to bring them together right. emotionally. Right. So we're going to mm -hmm. have to pull together with our feelings. And number three, mm -hmm. what we got? We got the nine of swords. Right. We are going to have to face our fears, folks. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's no way around it. We we have to wake up in the night. We have to take action. We've, we've got to not let these fears get the better of us as far as our goals and to persevere and to see them in the light of day and not be so fearful about them through the night when we all get chatting on Facebook. Guilty. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard not to. Um, so, wow. Okay. So that that's actually, I think, a, a perfect uh, reading for our time. Uh, right now, you know, and uh, yeah, I feel empowered. I know that you know nine of swords. There, we gotta gotta do it. You know, it's not gonna we can't sugarcoat it's it. It's right? gonna be it's a hard one. To, but... it, actually, it ties back to exactly what you said right before you did that. Like, you gotta do the work. You gotta you gotta put it in. You know, it's 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 uh, you know it's not gonna just come to you. Um, right. You have to have the, the passion behind it. You have to pull together and do the work. I mean, there you go. That that, that seems uh, very clear. That is what we really should do. And now we've just so, helped solve world pro world problems now too. This has been a really good, you know, forty five minutes. Um, yes. Yeah. Very, you know, I think maybe life changing. Hopefully for a lot of people. I know for me. Um, so that's. Uh, He's setting little, up better now, folks. I know. I, I am. I am. It's what's going. On. <laughs> um, so that's good. <laughs> I feel better. So, <laughs> so what's uh, we talked about? What's next for you? So, are you on social? You just mentioned Facebook. Of course, you're on social media, right? Yes, I'm on Facebook. I have a fan club page. So if you want to follow me on different art projects, things that are coming up, as we are very slowly getting into having tarot shows coming back to the United States, I'm yeah. in contact with people who are looking forward to having shows. There is one that is planned crossing fingers. It doesn't get canceled in San Jose in February. And that is the mystical, the metaphysical fair. I know it's a bit longer of a title, but it's metaphysical fair. If you go to okay. my fan club page, I sh and we scroll down, you should probably find some information on there as well. I know that RS has been canceled again, so we're just going to have to wait patiently to see if that comes back online in the future years. Mm -hmm. I know okay. that the newts has changed hands, and so I'm just waiting to hear to see where that is going to emerge and when mm -hmm. and so everyone's just kind of we're just kind of like holding our breath and waiting patiently to, for us to safely get back out to doing the conferences mm -hmm. and typically i'm i'm about i'm usually are kicking around a few of them throughout the year when they are up and about right. and let's see i am also on instagram i don't do twitter as much because i just post images about my work and everything, but I am also on right. LinkedIn. Right. And so every now and then I'll post work and what's coming up and book contracts and things of that nature as well. Wonderful. That's uh, fantastic. So yeah, so please, you know, reach out to, to Beth. Uh, you know, she's very accessible uh, to you. able to shows and things. And that's, like I said, one of the first time that we met um, as well. You mentioned uh, one of the shows, uh, News, I believe Michelle Welsh was on earlier. earlier. She's, I think they're running News uh, next year. So, uh, so yeah, it's going to be We'll see how that manifests. We're all excited about that and getting back to uh, whatever the new normal is and seeing each other again like that. But although in the meantime, we, we have this, these wonderful outlets to be able to do this with um, too. So, uh, well, great conversation, Beth. Thanks for being taking the time to talk about the ravenous dragon. And thanks for helping helping change the world here too with our reading. I feel really good about that. Um, so that's uh, that was fun. <laughs> so um, it's a uh, uh, ravenous dragon is available. It's actually on its way. The boat is here. Its boat is docking soon. So, you know, <laughs> it's uh, so pre order. It's available on MBS.com, as are um, all of uh, Beth's uh, uh, titles uh, with us. So, many thanks to everybody who was able to tune in today. Have a beautiful day, evening, night, wherever you happen to be. Um, enjoy yourselves and thanks for being a part of this uh, together. We really had fun uh, sharing this uh, wonderful deck with you. So, all right, take care now. <laughs>